geographic information system earlier we have thoroughly analyzed about free and open source software now let us focus on geographic information system gis or gis mainly the open source kind trying to match with the waves of the sea some footsteps here some footsteps there let's see prehistoric cave art this cave art from andhra pradesh shows the availability of animals for their food and a river i believe that this kind of a art is the first ever gis but much of the european society thinks and rightly so this doctor by name john snow who has actually mapped a cholera epidemic in the year 1854 and he has actually mapped the number of cases in the district of soho which is now a suburb of london and ultimately after plotting on the map the number of cases how cholera spread he has pointed to this pump which is the center for the spread of the cholera epidemic in the 19th century year 1854 people used to think that cholera was spread through air so he debunked that theory and this pump without handle even now it is kept there so that people remember and this is how gis has started the history of gis if you see early 20th century saw maps split into layers for example one layer for vegetation and another for what this is what agriculture engineers require mostly so this is the closest that it can get 1960 saw the world's first true operational gis in canada by the federal department of forestry canada geographic information system cgis 1970 geographic resources analysis support system gras developed in unix in fact it is the unix that has become linux afterwards 1980 the united states army illinois began using grass gis for mapping their resources if you actually go to the web page of grass 30 years grass more than 30 years in fact now it works on mac windows and linux it is one of the most robust and very orthodox gis some of you a lot of work is done on grass gis for agriculture you may go to the web page and see grass open source geospatial o s g e o and phosphor g free and open source software for gis 1994 to 2006 grass user conference was held around the world and in 2006 chicago the osgo was formed by a meeting among a, a group of 
researchers and scientists in a hotel. So 2006, first Phosphor G conference was held in Switzerland. So Phosphor G is the name of the conference and OSGEO, Open Source Geospatial, is the international organization and OSGEO India is the Indian counterpart. It so happens that one of, I'm one of the office bearers. You can see the wiki of OSGEO. Phosphor G acronym introduced in 2004 at a user conference of GRASS in Bangkok. Phosphor G is now a worldwide phenomenon. Every year it is held at various places. This slide shows only up to Seoul 2015. Later on it was held at various other places. I am lucky that I have attended one of them at Cape Town, Republic of South Africa. So you do work with QGIS, have projects, you can publish in Phosphor Browse the internet, you will find where the next Phosphor G is. Now it is a multi-million dollar affair. Open source GAS in India. Here an attempt is made to see historically what has happened. Dehradun used grass GAS on Sun Solaris workstation in 1990. My good friend Dr. Narendra Prashad a resource person who has in fact uh, made this very conference or webinar training possible. He has used it in the Wildlife Institute Dehradun back in 1990. The Indian Institute of Science Bengaluru has developed a clone of grass to read Indian resource satellite data IRS and then in 2001 National Informatics Center NIC Chennai it used UMN map server for Tamil Nadu web GIS and in Indian Institute of Science a tire 2 mirror to download grass was established in 2002 so this is these are the steps that have been taken right from 1990 that is well 30 years in the earlier lecture itself i have told about this great great man kalam open source gis 2003 he has narrated how he couldn't continue his conversation with Bill Gates because he told Bill Gates, the Tsar of Microsoft, that India must adopt open source technologies for our own uses and for Indic translation because we have so many Indian languages in which the open source is apt to be translated. I belong to the Geological Survey of India. 2005, we had our FOSS, two-day FOSS seminar at Hyderabad. You can see my friend Murli Dharan, uh, he, he has drawn so many cartoons. Uh, the most interesting is that people have developed hairstyle after one of the most popular GIS software. Well, this is a bit of the historical development. 15 years ago, uh, this was the first conference for which I was the secretary. October 2006, the open source Geospatial India was formed. 2007, it was launched 
and registered at Mapwall Fall a seminar and Open Source Geospatial India conducts its first open source GIS workshop in 2007 at Salim Ali Institute of Ornithology, Hyderabad, for which Dr. Narendra Prashad, who is our resource person here, was a principal scientist, now he has retired. So GSI starts open source GIS training in its regions. This was also in 2007. I was a director at that time of the training institute for GIS. Open Source Geospatial India initiates Ampilards project for my town in Andhra Pradesh, Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh. 2008, modus operandi of a fast GIS project in India. Myself and Dr. Narendra Prashad, we are the resource persons for this. We worked with Adhikavi Naniya University at Rajamandri. We presented the paper in 2008 at Cape Town, South Africa. Then Free Software Movement India, 2010, a conference was held and a wonderful speech by Abdul Kalam and uh, Government's Open Source Policy, 2014, Government pitched in for its open source policy, 2014, that is six years ago. The development of open source and the landmarks for actual internet progress in the country, they have gone together. These slides depicts that. Internet landmarks and open GIS. Open Street Map 2004, Department of Telecommunication declared in 2004 its broadband policy. 2005 Google Maps and social networking Orkut. Now we know only Facebook and all but Orkut was there at that time. 2006 OSGO launched. Ubuntu GNU Linux 14 years ago launched one of the most popular Linux. I encourage you to use Linux, GNU Linux and the Free Software Movement of India, FSMI, will help you. I am also part of it. Facebook makes its debut in 2006. 2007 Twitter comes to India. 2010 3G Spectrum TRAI launched in India. So 2010 is a big landmark here for the spread of internet and it is only with internet the open source software the floodgates of the open source GIS software is opened. The lab for spatial information in short LSI where open source geospatial India is nestled. 2012 Phosphor India conference was held uh, and a software LSI viewer was launched. 2013, the Rajamandri Web GIS a DSD project launched. 2014, DSD Winter School on Open GIS. This is a landmark because Department of Science and Technology is now taking its bets or laying its bets with open source GIS. You can have a winter school or a summer school in Srinagar, Sheri Kashmir University. We will help you. Manarajamandri.org societal GIS was launched with WFS. The entire data can be downloaded by anyone. Free open source software and free geospatial data. We also launched one project for Mysuru. Namma Mysuru. This is the Western Ghats Biodiversity Web GIS project. Dr. Narendra Prashad is going to deliver this wonderful lecture soon. I won't talk much about this, he's the expert. Then 
on Android, the open source GIS component has come and well, you are now doing Epicollect. There are several other softwares. One of them is OSM Android and how it can help society. This uh, slide depicts. Then uh, this was something done for coaching. Geospatial data collected for Cochin, the tabloid Hindu, and so OpenStreetMap, and through crowdsourcing, a lot of data is collected for the city of Cochin, Kerala, because you have OpenStreetMap on which you have a platform wherein you can input all your data for society, and all you need is a mobile with open street maps software one of them is voice android and uh, a pittance is the actual investment that is required for such societal gis 30000 i think it has become now less all you require is a desktop laptop and a broadband internet and a few mobile phones which we all have so with no investment now you can start your societal GIS. I wish the Sherry Kashmir University all the best that you must have all your agriculture engineering data on the web using the web GIS through QGIS. So the data from OpenStreetMap, yes, it is there for you. For Srinagar also it is well developed. Through the webinar training, you will see how easy it is to use it and further populate it and help society. So, there is what is known as OSGO Live DVD. QGIS is one software we are teaching you or training you or acquainting you. But since 2008, DVDs and pen drives are available and uh, you can just Use it on your laptop or desktop without soiling your system. Just running it through the DVD or even through a pen drive. Then uh, the Voice Geo Live DVD has much of the gamut of the open source geospatial software. You have QGIS at the top and uh, postgis after you have a lot of data you will require a database gis it is known as postgis it runs with postgresql spend more time and please see the internet this video will be available even after this interaction please see it again and again and we are always available for you so coming back to the surf if you see it, grass was the first, then you had open source geospatial international, then you had phosphagy, then OSGO India, and then, well, this is a slide about Godauri Kumbhamela we had. And the Kumbhamela used to a great extent the GIS we provided in 2015. And with this Khuda office, I thank the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sheri Kashmir University for providing us this opportunity. We'll be in touch with you will always help you when it comes to open source GIS. Namaskar. Bye-bye.